Greetings and welcome to LGR Oddware, where we're taking a look at hardware and software that is odd, forgotten, and obsolete. And today it is the IBM 8516 CRT touchscreen from the beginning of the 1990s. And uh, yeah, you can uh, touch and, and draw and do all kinds of things that you would normally do with a mouse or a light pen or whatever else, uh, just with your fingers. Uh, so let's see what this thing is and what it can do. All right, so this is the IBM PS2 Model 8516 13-inch CRT touchscreen monitor, first introduced in June of 1991 for a suggested retail price of 1,695 US dollars. Holy crap. Now that would be almost $3,100 at the time of this recording. Not a cheap price for a 13-inch VGA monitor back then, and it was built by IBM to be compatible with PCs running DOS, Windows 3, and IBM OS 2, of course, because they were still pushing it rather hard when this came out. And as advanced and awesome as it was for its time, it was not the first of its kind as far as touchscreen CRTs, not by a long shot. For instance, Hewlett Packard had their HP 150 computer with a touchscreen CRT back in 1983, and there were plenty of third-party alternative monitors that had touchscreens for PCs in 1991, so yeah, it wasn't brand new tech or anything. In fact, it wasn't even IBM's first touchscreen CRT. They had their IBM Info Window display back in 1986. And yeah, that bridged between an IBM AT and Laserdisc players. I would love to find one of those monitors. But anyway, back to the 8516. And unlike today's multi-touch capacitive touchscreens, these were single-touch resistive touchscreens. Which means in order to use them, you must apply pressure in a single spot to get anything to react. Now, early versions of capacitive multi-touch screens existed at the time, but they saw very little use. Pretty much what you saw were these resistive screens, most notably on ATMs and other kind of systems like that. And there were several different methods used at the time to enable resistive touch, often relying on a grid or an overlay underneath or on top of the glass. But not the 8516. This one used pressure transducers to determine the X and Y coordinates being touched. And it didn't just stop there, it also measured the Z-axis to respond to multiple degrees of pressure on any software that allowed it. Now this screen in particular was a relatively popular option throughout the 90s. In fact, you might have even used one yourself. It was used in educational, business, and public spaces for years. Some specific examples that I could find were student information kiosks used in schools such as Hofstra University in 1992, and workplace training and information systems such as Easy or the Employee Access System for You, and the Smart Traveler Transit information kiosks deployed by Caltrans all over the state of California in 1990. Yep, every single one of these used the IBM 8516, and it was also used, get this, for the Summer Olympics in 1992 in Barcelona. It was used for the media information systems for TV and radio commentators, where IBM provided 3,600 PS2s all over the events, fitted with the 8516 touchscreens. And, I mean, that's just scratching the surface. Who knows where else these screens were used? I can find records of these things being repurposed for all sorts of uses over the years, from ticket dispensing machines to kids' play things and whatever, as they just got cheaper over the years. In fact, there was a cheaper alternative introduced pretty much from the beginning from IBM, and that was the Touch Select, announced in early 1992 for $670, about a grand less than the main monitor. And this was actually a panel that attached to a number of compatible IBM monitors, such as the PS2 Model 8513. And yeah, I'm just rather fond of these PS2 monitors, whether it's a touchscreen or not. It's just classic no-frills IBM. And this one's even more no-frills than others. It doesn't even have a swivel base underneath, just big thick slabs of non-adjustable thick gray plastic to hold it up. And in addition to the expected VGA cable, you also have a PS2 mouse cable. And this is indeed what the monitor uses in order to make the touchscreen happen. So that plugs into your computer and then underneath the monitor is a pass-through for PS2 as well. And this is to connect your regular mouse. So yes, you can use touchscreen and mouse functions simultaneously. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for the monitor. It's just a monitor. Uh, we're just gonna need to find some drivers and install it. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that because I am psyched to touch my screen in all the right ways. So for some period appropriateness, I'm gonna be using this IBM PS2 Model 90 XP 486. 
And I've got it all plugged in here. Everything is compatible because it is a PS2 after all. So uh, yeah, let's just power this on and power the computer on, see what we get. And of course, drivers are gonna be the first thing, which I hope I have the right ones. <laughs> so yeah, if you saw me get this computer, uh, well, a little while ago actually now here in LGR, I had a ton of discs and I thought for sure that this 8516 would have a driver disc in there somewhere, but nope, for the life of me, I can't find one if it is. <laughs> so I uh, just downloaded one online and hopefully it is the correct set of drivers. It's the only one that I could find. Dang it, this table gets more wobbly every time. I really gotta get a new table this year. All right. Sweet. IBM Touch Device Installation version 1.0. It's failed. What the f You didn't ask me to do anything different. What? All right, I'll try putting it on a disc. I don't know what it wants. All right, that worked. Touch device is capable of operating in two ways. Touch pointing mode, touch only no mouse emulation, or mouse emulation mode, either touch or mouse. I've got a PS2 mouse, so we'll try option two. What? Well, why did it do that? Apparently the self-extracting executable does not extract it in the correct way on the... Oh, well, that's dumb. Yeah, see, files are supposed to be going in separate directories. Why didn't it do that in DOS? These folders weren't there at all. Well, we'll just rewrite the disk. Okay. Yeah, let's try that again. All right. Installation was sweet. Allows you to configure the IBM Touch device. Uh, that would be this one. Looks like you can do this and the touch select, which is pretty cool. Uh, that was easy. Well, let's see if it did indeed update things. Sweet. So IBM Touch Device Driver version 1.01 is on there. Ooh, downloading microcode. That's a message you don't see anymore. <laughs> This program allows you to calibrate the IBM Touch device. Press the center of the target firmly and accurately. Ah! Whoa. <laughs> this is rad. If it was just this, I'd already be happy. Oh man, that's sweet. Yes, save. Oh, well, that's just, that's just amazing. Ah! <laughs> Okay, well, let's see if I can, like, uh, if it's in mouse mode. <gasps> okay, so yeah, I can control the mouse cursor. I mean, it's not necessarily a mouse cursor, necessarily. It's obviously, it's just kind of this thing, but... All right, let's see what's in this demo folder. We got draw and phone. Hmm, curious what phone is. Uh-huh, all right. Dial that. Yeah, I don't know what the point of that is. And the other one I think was draw. Well, let's try this out. I'm assuming this is just gonna be a drawing program. Uh, guess it is. Oh, there we go. Got some brush tips. Uh, apparently it hit exit. I didn't, I didn't tap that. Yay, that's not the color I chose, but. So it's definitely pressure sensitive. Like when I just barely pressed that yes, it selected it. And then if I press it down, it clears it actually. I mean, that's pretty cool. So that's a demonstration of the pressure, uh, the Z axis there. So. I mean, that's pretty sweet. Why not? Now it's just a little. <laughs> it's a little. <laughs> I don't know what's with that. Uh, all I wanted to do is draw a straight line. That kind of worked. I guess if you do it too slow, it's like freaking out. All right, let's just exit out of there. Uh, that's cool, I like that. How? I wonder if it'll run in Windows, because I think there's a separate installation or something for Windows, but we'll see here in a moment. Whoa, nope, holy crap, It it's doing stuff. I don't know if that's correct, because it kind of just seems like it's in, yeah, it's in mouse emulation mode. The mouse just stopped working. What the, what the dick? Hmm. Apparently, it's just nothing is working. Not even the regular mouse. Oh, it just, it just, just crapped itself. 
Yeah, I have no clue what's going on. No mouse device of any kind is working at the moment, so <laughs> time to go troubleshoot and I'll be back, hopefully. All right, so I just cleared out everything and reinstalled and it seems to be working again, or at least it loaded the driver and whatnot. So, uh, and now the mouse just, just crapped itself again. It just totally, totally stopped working. Uh, something is not right. <laughs> That's for sure. I think it's working again. That's the mouse click sound. So we're going to try some city here. Uh, cause I, I don't know what else to do. Well, I mean that, that kind of works. Three, seven, one. Yay, copy protection. Well, that is, uh, it's not very fun to move the mouse this way. In fact, it's terrible. Continue. <laughs> okay, I gotta try out some other mode because this is not gonna work. So there is this utility here that lets you do things. It's like some diagnostics or whatever. So there's an emulation type of the mouse here. You can choose between relative, glass mouse, or absolute. We have absolute chosen. Hopefully that's a little better than relative. So this is absolute mode. This makes a little bit more sense. So instead of like having to move it around relatively, you can just tap like that and <laughs> well, it's uh, anyway. Okay. So this is kind of cool. Like seriously, I like that. When it's like, you know, large things that you can actually tap, this makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, now, obviously, it's not necessarily um, <laughs> ideal because this game is not made for it, but it does work. Really, uh, as far as the resolution for the types of touches that it can recognize, it's pretty high relative to others of the time period. But little things like that are just not like ideal. The fact that it kind of does work is pretty friggin' sweet. So this is glass mouse mode. Uh, it's like relative mode, but just way more sensitive. I still don't know why Windows isn't working. It should be. I've installed the Windows things. It's in, you know, mouse emulation mode here. It's working for DOS programs, but I mean, it says Windows supports installed. I don't know, man. Just don't know. I guess it's not meant to be. Well, see, now I'm just really curious and I've got to try. Duke Nukem 3D, <laughs> which this is not a very fast computer, so it's probably gonna run like garbage, but it's worth it for science. All right, it's time to try the 8516. Let's rock. And hope that it works. Does it work? <laughs> it does. <laughs> oh, okay. Here we go. I got, I got it. I can do this. Oh my goodness. I think the sensitivity is a little, little high. Let's put it all the way down and see what happens. Okay, that's a little absurd, but it works. So I have, mouse uh, is moving right now and I'm just shooting with the uh, keyboard, which I, I, in hindsight, maybe I should have done click to do it, but whatever, I didn't. So, and every time it's beeping, I'm actually clicking the mouse. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, this is exhausting. Uh. <laughs> My arm is hurting so much. <laughs> okay, jump, jump. There we go. All right, I got this. I'm Duke Nukem. And open that door. Oh, there's a guy behind me. It's really hard to turn around. Oh, I ran out of ammo. <laughs> Dang it. No. Can't let this happen. I'm better than this. Oh, I guess I'm not. Blame it on the touch screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for this episode of LGR Oddware, and I hope that you enjoyed it. I certainly think this is a pretty neat little monitor when it works. And um, yeah, that's just unfortunate that I wasn't able to get it working with Windows 3, even though I've seen it working with it. I know that it does, and I mean, it's meant to do that, but for whatever reason, my configuration is just not working, whether it be the monitor having issues or the computer itself or the software, who knows what, 
uh, is just not meant to be today. But I will be revisiting touch screen CRT solutions again in the future. So I'm sure that won't be uh, the only chance that we get to look at Windows 3 with a touchy feely CRT. So if you would like to see some of those, then I recommend sticking around. There are new videos every Monday and Friday here on LGR. All sorts of topics, not just oddware, of course, it's software and games and whatever else I happen to want to cover whenever I want to cover it. It's just kind of what I do. And as always, thank you very much for watching.